Hi friends, my name is Maruti and I'm the co-founder of Kraku. In this video, I'll discuss my strategy about the LRDA section of CAD. Like many of you know, LRDA is a very unpredictable section. In verbal, you can plan your section attempt uh, to the minutest detail. You can say that, okay, out of the four RCs, I'll attempt three RCs. In the verbal section, out of the eight questions, I'll attempt five questions. Something or the other can be planned to a very specific detail. In LRDA, on the other hand, you don't know whether the sets will be easy, whether the sets will be difficult. Sometimes, even in an easy set, we can get stuck in the middle. So what to do if things like that happen? In this particular video, I'll be discussing three things. First, I'll talk about preparation strategy. That is, before the examination, what do I do to ensure that uh, my LRDI skills are up to date? Secondly, I'll talk about the exam uh, day scenario, where I'll tell you what I plan to do on the day of the examination. Finally, I'll give you some tips about how to salvage a section if things go wrong. And in this particular part, I'll discuss about uh, CAT 2020. In that particular year, I performed uh, very poorly in the first 30 minutes of the LRDI section but I somehow managed to salvage the section in the last 10 minutes. So I'll be discussing uh, that attempt in detail towards the end of the video. Firstly, talking about the preparation for LRDA, I solve a lot of LRDA sets on a regular basis. Like many of you know, I record the video solutions for the Krakow Daily Target. To record the video solution, I have to first solve the set on my own. Secondly, I also take the LRDA sections of uh, Dashcats. Many times I record the video solutions for these uh, Dashcats. So this ensures that on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm at least solving one or two LRDAs on a regular basis. This consistency, this being in touch, I think is very important for uh, me to do well in the examination. But still, even with all of this practice, even if I'm solving one or two LRDAs uh, regularly, it always happens to me that uh, with say one or two weeks left for the examination, I always get stressed about the LRDA section because I always feel that what will happen if I get stuck in a set. So to calm myself down in the last one or two weeks, what I always do is I solve the LRDA sets from previous years papers. Many of these LRD assets I've actually already solved many times uh, in the last few years. But just to calm myself down, I always uh, get some sense of ease when I look at the LRD assets of previous years papers. This would be definitely my advice to students who are preparing seriously for CAT. If you're worried of LRDA, the best way to gain confidence, the best way to actually get an understanding of how to improve in LRDA are the previous years papers of CAT. If you're solving the LRDAs from uh, say CAT 2023 or CAT 2024, you would feel that, okay, these are sets that have actually come in the examination. I'm able to solve at least some of them. So you will feel more confident. That is what I do to calm myself down and to get more confidence as we go into the examination. The second very important source which will help you solve a lot of diverse uh, LRDI sets is the Krakow Daily Targets. Every single day, we give one set in LRDI, one set in uh, verbal and one uh, test in quant. All of them with detailed video solutions. So in the long run, if you're solving these daily targets every single day, they will help you quite a lot on the day of the examination. Now let us look at the second part, which is my LRDA test taking strategy. So what do I do on the day of the examination to increase my chances of doing well in LRDA? My entire uh, exam strategy revolves around keeping my composure in the LRDA section. Sometimes it has happened earlier that when I get stuck in a set, I panic and I lose uh, even more precious minutes. So I devised a strategy to ensure that uh, the chances of this happening or this repeating are minimized. So how do I do it? Firstly, even before the exam starts, I set targets for myself. In verbal, I want to attempt all the questions. In quant, I want to attempt all the questions. But in LRDI, I set low targets. Earlier, there used to be four sets. And out of the four sets, I wanted to attempt two sets. Because if I get two sets correct, that would ensure that my percentile is anyways pretty good. Now, LRDI has probably five sets. So probably I'll try to think of say two or two and a half sets. I keep the uh, target low so that if uh, things are not going well, I won't panic. Secondly, Suppose things turn out very well. Suppose in the first 20 minutes, I get my two sets correct. Then it won't happen that I will just waste the remaining 20 minutes. I'll try to ensure that I make the best use of the remaining 20 minutes. But at least in LRDI, I don't uh, tend to keep a very high score. This I think is very important for students who uh, plan to make LRDI their scoring section, which I don't think is a good strategy. I know many uh, students who tell me that, okay, verbal is my uh, scoring section. I would say that is good because verbal can be consistent and it can be predictable. Similarly, I know many, many students, especially engineers, who plan to do very well in quant. That also, I think, is a good strategy. Quant also is predictable to an extent. So you can try to score very well in it. But LRDA is an unpredictable section. So if your exam strategy depends on you solving three sets or you solving all the four sets, that I think is not a good strategy. Uh, you can always aim higher, but even if you do poorly, that should be okay. Don't try to put more pressure on yourself to do well in LRDA because I think most likely it will backfire. Secondly, to ensure that uh, I keep my calm in the LRDA section, I spent the first two minutes of the LRDA section looking at all the sets. So once I look at all the sets, I have a rough idea of what type of set it is. Is it an arrangement set? Is it a uh, data interpretation set? Is it a missing value in the table set? 
Is it a 2D, 3D kind of a set? So at least I have a rough idea of what is the kind of set it is. I also try to understand how difficult the set is. Now once I have looked at all the sets, I make a priority order. I would tell myself that, okay, this seems like an easy set. I'll try to attempt it first. The second set, probably I will attempt this. And I'll make a, a priority order so that if I get confused or if I get stuck in a set, I'm not confused about which set to attempt next. And again, if it works out and if I'm able to solve a set in the first 10 minutes, then it is good. I'll go to the next set in my priority order. But suppose I get stuck in a set. Suppose I spend like say eight minutes or nine minutes, I get stuck in a set. Then at least I calm myself down. I tell myself that there are 30 minutes remaining. I need to just answer two sets. So I have 15 minutes per set. And in this 30 minutes, I have already had a sense of what the other sets are. So I know what are the sets. It is not as if I'm starting something completely from scratch. I have a rough idea of what the set is. So I tend to calm myself down and tell myself that I have 30 minutes left. I need to solve two sets. So I'll have 15 minutes per set. Suppose I get stuck even in the second set. It happened once, like I mentioned in CAT 2020. I'll discuss that in detail towards the end of the video. But suppose it so happens that you are stuck in the first two sets and 20 minutes have elapsed. What do I do? Then I tell myself that, okay, my strategy is to just get one set correct. I have 20 minutes, I'll get one set correct and I'll try to get some of the theta questions correct or I'll try to answer uh, at least parts of some of the other sets. Again, I try to calm myself down and I try to make the best use of those 20 minutes. Essentially, I don't give up. I try to keep fighting in the last minute. Thirdly, when the verbal section is ending, towards the last three or four minutes, I mentally check out from the verbal section. Because once it happened earlier, I was very focused on the verbal section. In the last few seconds, I was trying to answer a uh, reading comprehension. I think there was one question left and I was scrambling towards the uh, end of the passage to try to figure out uh, the correct answer for one of the questions. And then suddenly the exam ended. Now, you know that there is no break between the verbal section ending and LRDA starting. So I didn't check out the time, but I know that the time was running low. So I was uh, having this adrenaline uh, rush. I was trying to figure out the answer for that particular uh, question. Uh, section ended and uh, LRDA started and I was completely in a shock because I didn't expect the section to end so quickly. And it took me like three or four minutes to actually get back into the zone. I knew immediately that LRDA section has started, but I was not mentally prepared or mentally ready to start solving LRDA because I was mentally focused on verbal and that reading comprehension, all of those things. So to ensure that that doesn't happen, what I do now is in the last three minutes or four minutes when I'm attempting the verbal section, I mentally check myself out where I keep trying to solve uh, the reading comprehension or the verbal ability or whatever questions I'm solving. But at least I know that time is ending. Uh, I don't get over involved in any one particular question in the verbal section. This would ensure that in the last three or four minutes, it is likely that my accuracy in verbal has decreased, but it won't crash. Sometimes maybe I'll get one question uh, wrong in verbal section. But at least when the LRDA section starts, I'm completely on. I know exactly that, okay, LRDA has started. I have like four sets or five sets. This is what I have to do. I have to go through all the five sets. I have to get a good understanding. All of those things I'm completely tuned in right from the start. This ensures that I am not wasting any minutes into uh, trying to get into that zone. In the last part of this video, I'll tell you how to try to salvage a section when things go wrong. One of the things that I would tell you is ensure that you don't leave any theta question unanswered. Theta questions have no negative marks. So you should definitely make some guess. And when you're making some guess, put in some time to make uh, the guess to be an educated guess, because then your chances of succeeding increase. For example, I'll tell you what happened in CAT 2020. In CAT 2020, I put a lot of effort into my verbal section, like I told you earlier. The verbal section ended abruptly for me. That is, I was not prepared for it to end. I thought that there were at least uh, one or two minutes more, but somehow it ended suddenly. And then LRDA section started. I was completely in a state of panic. Uh, I had an adrenaline crash because towards the end of the verbal section, I used a lot of adrenaline. So I didn't start the LRDA section properly. And I wasted a lot of time at the start. I was not able to concentrate properly. And 30 minutes elapsed. I got only one set partially correct. I was able to attempt one set in which I got three questions correct and one question I was not able to get it. I knew I couldn't understand that question, so I knew that that question would be wrong. 30 minutes have elapsed, I have only three questions done. Now, there was a six question set which I was attempting and I made some progress in it, but uh, I was getting three cases. It was a question about a farmer who had four daughters and he had to distribute his land to each of these four uh, daughters. And in each plot of the land, I think there were different types of trees. Now we had to figure out what are the kind of trees that are there, uh, which daughter got which plot, all of these things. And I was getting three cases. Now from the questions, I knew that only one of the cases is correct, but I was getting three cases and I was missing out some information. In my state of panic, I was not able to concentrate properly. And even though it was a long set, even though I was solving all of it, I was missing out one piece of information. Later, I realized that I was skipping one line, one of the lines of the instruction for some reason, even when I was going through it multiple times, I was just skipping that line and going to the next line because of which I was getting multiple cases. Anyway, 30 minutes were gone and I had three cases and I was not making any progress. At that time, I thought in desperation that I look at the questions. I'll try to see if I can answer some of them. 
And one of the question I remember was uh, about how many pine trees Chitra has. Now, according to my three cases, she should either have six pine trees or 12 pine trees or 18 pine trees. Now, amongst the options, only 18 was matching. There were uh, 18 and I think 25, 30, something like that. But I knew that 18 was the only number which was common to my three cases and the options. So immediately I knew that the number of pine trees Chitra has is 18. I also knew that this case is correct. So using that information that was given in the question, I was able to solve all the six questions correct. Once that was done, I had an adrenal high. I felt uh, more optimistic and I started looking for other sets. But by that time, uh, the time was very low. I think I had around three to four minutes. And I felt that the only set which I did not attempt till now was one another uh, six question set about a game. It was a games and tournament set. It was a game about high and low. It was also a six question set. Now there were only four minutes left. Again, I knew that I don't think I can solve the entire set in four minutes because uh, that is too low to actually solve that set. But I used some of the time to read the instructions and I could immediately figure out that, okay, there are six rounds in this game. It was being played by, I think, two or three players and uh, there were some rules, but I couldn't understand the rules because the time was very limited. Then I looked at some of the data questions. There were four data questions in that uh, set and all the data questions were about how many rounds did this particular thing happen or in which round did this particular thing happen or something like that which involved rounds. So I knew that because I knew that there were six rounds in the game, the answer for this data question has to be some natural number between one and six. And again, based on how the question was framed, for example, if somebody says in how many rounds did X beat Y? Then I know that total there were six rounds and it is most likely that X did not beat Y in all the six rounds. It is also possible that the answer will not be just one. So most likely I used to put guesses as either two or three or four. And amongst those four theta questions, I got two of them correct. So at the end of the day, instead of just getting three questions correct, which seemed very likely with just 10 minutes to go, I got three plus six plus two, that is 11 questions correct. And suddenly I did very well in the examination. Why did I do very well? It is obviously a lot of luck was involved, uh, but it was also possible that I was putting a lot of fight. I was trying. Now. When three minutes were remaining, it is very easy for me to tell myself that, okay, I got a six question correct uh, out of luck. So let me just relax. Uh, my set has been salvaged. But I did not do that because I feel that every question is important. Now, I would want all the students also to develop this kind of an attitude where till the last minute, till the last second, keep trying, keep trying different, different things. Give your full, especially in the LRDA section. Because even if there is an adrenaline crash, which happens after LRDA, I think quant is a separate section where uh, the importance of uh, composure will be lessened. In LRDA, I think if you are not composed, you will uh, mess it up completely. But essentially, in LRDA section, my strategy is very simple. I try to fight till the last second. You have to keep thinking of how can I get one more question correct. And I think that attitude also helps me in trying to do well in the section. Overall, I hope that this video was helpful for you. If you gained anything and if uh, any one of you have any doubt with respect to how to attempt the LRDA section or with respect to cat preparation in general, please do comment below this video. I look at all the comments and I'll try to answer them to the best of my ability.